Praise be to God once again, dear church. I am so excited to share the word today once again with you all after many uh, weeks, I should say. Um, how many of you really, really, uh, honestly, you put your heart on your chest and say that I am blessed because I am here? Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I'm happy that I have so many companions because I'm one of, uh, one, one of you, your kind. Today, as I was uh, meditating, the Lord spoke to me and the Lord, this is what the Lord uh, really wants to tell you. The Lord, our God. We have a God who answers our prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Maybe sister can put the, the first uh, slide. So the Lord who answers. My dear children of God, Today you are sitting here with an anxiety, with a, with a question, or you may have your own thoughts uh, uh, going in your mind, uh, like, am I answered, or all my prayers are answered, or no? Being answered. I tell you something, we are serving a Lord who answers our prayers. Believe it or not. Praise God. You believe it or not. But the truth is, God listens to our prayers. Even sometimes when we even do, do not ask. How many, of you, how many of you are in agreement with me on that? Hold on to it, hold on to it, hold tight. I'm going to prove that. I'm going to prove that our Lord listens to our prayers. Hallelujah. I want to turn you, I want to take you to Genesis chapter 18, verse 23 to 33. Let us turn, turn our Bible to Genesis. I want to show a few characters from the Bible who were answered by the Lord. Who were answered by the Lord. Let us turn to Genesis 18, 23 to 33. I don't want to read the whole thing, but I, I want you to focus. You know what happened there. Here, the conversation between Abraham and the Lord. You know, right? You know the story. What is the conversation between Abraham and the Lord here? Here you can see a prayer of a godly man asking for his favor on the city that is going to be destroyed. How many of you really pray for the city? Now we are in Brampton, we are in Mississauga, or maybe you are in the, in the GTA or in Toronto. How many of you really have the burden for the city that is going to be destroyed? The souls, they are, they are going to leave into the hell. Here you see Abraham. So you know the story, like Abraham is going and asking the Lord, okay, if there are going to be 50 people, will you not destroy the city? Then he go, goes, goes on and on, like, you know, the bargain goes on. Will you not destroy? Will you not destroy? How many he reduced? How many he came down finally? What was the last number? Let me see how many of you really read the Bible closely. You know, remember, you remember. What was the number last he came to? Sister put the thing, she put the answer on the board. How many number? Where did he start with the? He started with 50 and he ended with the... Many of us are here like that. We say that, Lord, I may not be doing all what you are expecting, but I will do. Maybe if I leave some few, will you not accept me? Will you not take me to heaven? Likewise, we, we reduce, 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 and finally we say that, okay, five minutes of prayer is enough for me a day. Sometimes we do that, right? But here, a prayer of a man who has the burden for the city that is going to be destroyed and he is asking, Lord, will you not destroy? He is pleading for the city. Was his prayer answered? Come on. Was it answered or no? No. Yes or no? I would say his prayer was answered because God was answering to him. Yes? But what he asked for, it was not fulfilled because what he expected, at least five righteous men in the city, at least ten righteous men in the city. Were there ten righteous men? There were not a ten. So the Lord went ahead with what he had his plan. But the Lord answered Abraham. 
you might be asking the lord you might be today asking the lord lord i have somebody in my home not saved i have the burden to pray for them would you not the lord answers we serve a lord we we believe in a lord we follow a lord we worship a lord who answers our prayers let us turn to the next one genesis 21 Turn to Genesis 21, 16 and 17. Here, a prayer of a mother crying out for her son. For those who do not know, this mother is not even an Israelite. You know, right? Abraham's, Abraham's servant girl, Hagar. What happened there? Can you can we all read can we all read that since it is a small verse then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off about a distance of um, bowshot and for she said let me not look on the death of the child and she sat opposite him and she lifted up her voice and wept and the next verse it says and god heard the voice of the boy and the angel of the god call to hagar from heaven and said to her what troubles you hagar dear children of god i tell you today in order to listen in order to hear back from god you need not be a god's child like you can tell your neighbors your friends your family members who may not be in saved one or who might have not baptized but deep in their heart if they pray Here if you see Hagar she is not even crying out to the Lord but she is crying out to herself You may be having a situation where you are not able to pray today you may be saying that oh I cannot every time there is a sister there I I I may visit she says pastor I cannot pray my situations are so bad whenever I want to sit and pray I feel sleepy I feel dull or I feel like crying words are not coming out from my mouth or even my mind is wavering my dear brother sister you may be in the situation but god answers to you god is listening to you i tell you there is no one other than our loving lord who sees us better than anyone else a cry of a mother for her son but god answered to her did he answer or not You know the story a cry of a mother for her son who is about to die Genesis 21 16 and 17 mark my word i tell you today you may be crying in your personal life you may be crying in your business or you may be crying in your job or in your situation maybe the enemy seem to be more in number you may feel like you are defeated but i tell you god is listening to you god is answering to your prayer god is answering Let us turn to the next one. Let us let us take another example. Let us take to Exodus chapter 17 11. Turn to say Exodus chapter 17 verse 11. Come on, you can do a little more faster. Exodus 17 11. Who is going to read for me? Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel No, you are still t- turning the pages. Oh maybe we'll have to do the bible study more in our church <laughs> or maybe some bible quiz one of you can read for me please exodus yes the verse is very much there come on jenny you want to read yes uh, yes john yes yes pray for thank you yeah just just this the word see now here a prayer of a godly man a man of god who leads israel to the promised land now today he has a situation where the enemies are overpowered or the enemies are coming and fighting against the israelites now he is praying to the lord for victory i'm telling you the first example that i quoted you was from abraham he was praying for his city for his brother city the second one was hagar was praying for her own son now here we have a situation for his people to overcome against the enemies 
and whenever his hand was lifted Moses hands were lifted who won Israelites won in your personal life in your life if you are praying every day to God if your hands are lifted unto him you cannot be defeated by your enemies I tell you today keep your hands up to the Lord asking for God's help let your hands be lifted unto the Lord every day I tell you so that the enemies will not overcome you let us turn to the next one prayer of Ezekiel the king for his illness second Kings chapter 20 chapter 20 verse 2 and 3 here the prayer of a sick man who is about to die then Ezekiel turned to turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord saying now O Lord please remember how I have walked before you in faithfulness and with the whole heart and I have done what is good in your sight and he wept bitterly my dear children of God sometimes we do everything in the right sense everything according to the will of the Lord but still something happens in our life we don't have answer to it often we are bombarded with questions from our friends and family members oh you've been so good you've been doing all this for so many years why then this happened to you I tell you for the glory of God in your life he wept he prayed and God extended his lifetime his prayer was answered it is the same God we believe we are worshiping today how many of you would say that my God listens to my prayer my God answers to my prayer come on say it aloud please prayer yes my God answers to my prayers come on let us all say once more my God answers to my prayers amen so he Ezekiel prayed for his own illness and he calls upon to the Lord and says Lord you remember the ways I've been walking I've been doing and then the Lord extends his life so one other example I would like to quote here let us turn to first Kings chapter 18 36 and 37 first King chapter 18 36 and 37 and at the time of the offering of the oblation Elijah the prophet came near and said O Lord God of Abraham Isaac and Israel let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word the next verse says answer me O Lord answer me that this people may know that you O Lord are God and that you have turned these hearts back their hearts back here a prayer of God's chosen one the prophet asking for a proof or asking for God's mighty power to be revealed so that the Gentiles will know he is the Lord of Lords he is the God of gods my dear children Put that question to you I, I, you know be honest and say that how many how many of you have really prayed that uh, maybe a sickness maybe a trouble maybe something in life uh, happening around you have you ever asked uh, through this or in this weakness Lord I want this world to know that you are God of this you are master having control over everything let your power be revealed let your name be glorified let the people know that you are the Lord of Lords have you ever prayed so as I told in the first service we always have our prayer it is just like the grocery list I need this I need that I need this I need that Lord you give me that you know this sickness you know that blah 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 we have all this listed out to the Lord but have we ever prayed for if you if you carefully observe all these examples that I have taken one was for the bird in the city that is going to be destroyed 
a burden for the city, one for, us, for the next generation. The next generation is going to die. So if you carefully observe th through all these five examples, you can see the word, the Lord's mighty hand on the generation, on the city, on our personal life, on, in our family, in, to overtake our enemies, to come out of the struggles, etc., etc. Though the examples may be few, but they tell a lot, they talk a lot. Have you ever ever thought that these verses, these characters have this much of depth, that much of teaching in our lives? If not, no. <laughs> the other day uh, when I, um, I was in India, like I was uh, preaching to a church there, I was giving all these examples. And a group of, because uh, due, between the prayer service they had a break. They had a break, a tea break, because it was midnight, 12 o'clock service, so um, the fasting prayer they had. So the, a bunch of people came and said, Pastor, you said uh, God answers to us. Yes, but it's not happening in our life. It's not happening. I've been praying for so many years, or I've been praying for this. So the, the question comes, why our prayers seem to be unanswered? How many are here sitting today, sitting here today, saying that, oh, I've been praying, but my prayers are not answered? Be honest. Be honest, please. We are in the presence of the Lord. Have we not come across this thought in our mind, saying that our prayers are not answered? No? If you say no, no, my prayers are always, maybe you are, you are <laughs> fooling yourself, I would say. <laughs> I would say. Right. <laughs> yeah. Pastor Bob says we don't want to mention that. Well, sometimes we feel that our prayers are not answered. We feel. But the fact is not that. Catch my words, please. We feel that our prayers are not answered, but it is not the fact. Now, when we pray, there are a few things I would like to share with you today and I want you to take home and meditate and come back to me if you have any other thought on that. First thing is, turn to James uh, chapter 5 verse 16. Our prayers are not answered according to some of you or according to some of our believers. Prayers seem to be unanswered or rather uh, they, we say, I'm praying good uh, but, but I don't see anything. What does James say here? Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. That you may be, that you may be healed. Our prayers, make sure in our prayer we have a confession. Every time we kneel down, first tell to the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry, I have done something wrong knowingly or unknowingly, or I might have done something wrong. You know the story uh, Lord Jesus said about the two guys who came into inside the church and prayed. One who stood near the altar and said, Oh Lord, I pray three times a day, I do all these, I fulfill all the commands you know, given by Moses. The other one stands at the door. That doesn't mean uh, who, those who are sitting at the door only will be heard. God seeks the humble heart. God is waiting for you to confess your sins. Say that, Lord, I'm sorry what I have done for. Not only to the Lord, but your, let your actions be shown to each other as well. It could be your husband, it could be your, your, your family member, it could be your friend. Something, done, something you, you might have done something wrong or even sometimes even if you have not done something wrong, for the sake of the Lord, for the sake of His kingdom, the love the Lord has shown us. Tell them, tell them, confess. Compromise. Not compromising the good values. Compromise with the, with the person so that you don't carry any guilt in your heart. So here if you see, in our prayer, we must confess. First thing. The second one is, do we ask the Lord if it is according to His will? Because Jesus 
the, the, the prayer, Lord, our Lord taught us, he said, Father, like even in, at Gethsemane, what did he do? He prayed, Father, if it is thy will, let this cup be taken away from me. Most of us, or most of, our, most of the time, when we pray, we never ask for what is the will of my Lord in my life. Isn't it, brother? We, we, we often ask, okay, I want this, I want that, or this need to be done. But what is the Lord's will through that situation that you are going through at this moment? Have you ever asked the Lord, Lord, according to your will, Lord, according to what you have planned in my life, Lord. Our prayer needs to have all these brothers. That is why you need to show Luke 22, 42. One of us can read, ask the Lord to do according to his will. Luke, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but... Can you close your eyes and say that, Lord, whatever situation I am going today, my, my life now, let your will be done, Lord. Because He answers our prayers. I'm telling you, He answers to you. You may want, you may want, I remember a story, uh, I remember a story, it's an old story, maybe you, you people will be knowing. Uh, there, was a, there was a father and a son, uh, the father was a wealthy man, well-to-do man. And the son uh, was doing his higher education and then once his higher studies were over, uh, he was graduated. So the son always had uh, thought he wanted to buy a good car. So the father also knows that uh, the son likes that particular car. So every time they pass by the car dealership, they always had a look at the car. The son and father, they keep talking, 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 you know, like... So the son knows that father is aware that he is interested in the car and the father knows the son is interested in the car. So on the graduation day, the father, uh, the son comes with his uh, com the certificate and the, you know, the degree, everything. He comes uh, expecting the father to give him the car that he wanted. Because he is graduated, now he is eligible, he has the license, now he can drive. So father is going to give him that great present. He comes in, the father hands him over a good book wrapped so nicely. And the son takes the book, opens it and it says the Bible. The Bible. <laughs> so, being a Christian family or <laughs> um, followers of Christ, they had Bible in their home. Is it something new? Is it something... So the son was so furious at seeing this, this, you know, the father has, according to the son, the father has cheated him. <laughs> you know, he did not give him what he expected. So he threw the Bible off, then he walked away of the house. He has passed by, the son lived his own life, he got his job, he was doing, doing well. And then uh, letters come from father. Year after year, the son never visited the father. After a while, the son goes back to visit the father because he came to know the father passed away. The father was no more living in the next city. The son goes back to visit his father. When he visited the place, he remembered he takes the, uh, the album, the videos, he runs through all of them, remembering those old days when he and his father were together. And at that time he realized that the Bible that he threw off, it was at one corner of the house. He dusted, dusted it, opened it, and then beautifully his father wrote, wrote there, To my beloved son, with lots of love from dad. It was written there. And as he opened the, the Bible, inside there was a pouch where... A key was kept. The car key, yes. The car key was kept. So, he was on tears. He was, you know, tears rolling over his cheek. He cried, he cried, he cried. You know, because he realized that he expected a gift in a way he, didn't, he was looking for. 
how many of us in life uh, we receive the gift from the lord but no, sometime it may not be it may not be wrapped in a way we expect it but the lord is giving it to you he is giving it to you how many of you realize understand that how many years he wasted how many years he carried the grudge in him that oh my father did not give but he was a foolish son there because he did not realize the blessing the lord has given to him through his father my dear brothers and sisters if you are so like you know you may be asking something ask the lord let thy will be done lord and the third one is like as proverb 3 5 and 6 says let us turn to yeah proverb 3 5 and 6 are we depended completely upon the lord upon our god do we have complete trust in him do we have complete trust in him we pray we pray everyone comes to the church like we take our vehicle and we we go to anywhere we trust we hope that we would be going to the place right with that hope with that trust we take our vehicle we drive will anyone here would say that oh i'm i don't think i will be going to that place but i'm driving will you say so no why then in your prayer life that is happening in your prayer life you calculate things according to what is happening around you in your life but then you are expecting god hoping god but you simply say that oh yes god is going to give me but deep in your heart oh this many years it's been happening i don't know is it going to happen now do you depend completely on god when you pray am i clear here you understand what i'm trying to tell you when we pray do we really depend on god alone so when we pray or when we ask god something it has to come the other way around how the other way around what is happening in real world today my dear brothers and sisters we think okay now i am working in a company or i am running my business i need to have these many orders or i need to get promotion in this way so i'll have to ask the lord lord give me this promotion or take this manager away from my desk so that i can become a better one in that place you know we think that way rather i would say you have to come all the way around like upside down how first kneel down just as moses lift your hands and say that lord whatever situation i am going through right now maybe something i am doing something wrong lord tell me what i am supposed to do let thy will be done lord let your will be done in my life lord show me the way what i need to do lord father you teach me then you would say this is what i need this is what just like isaiah you would say i need this but lord i look upon you i am looking upon you alone i am waiting for you now if it is your will let it be done to my do you ever do that do you ever do that think it over often we do the other way around we calculate everything you know um, <laughs> being uh, from uh, me india like we have this this problem like everything will happen but you know but you know but you know do you see that but you know. <laughs> there is no but once you depend on god as i told you the other day peter jumped inside the water if he depended on his swimming ability he would have been swimming not walking on water he depended on jesus he walked on water hallelujah so if you depend on god you will overcome your trouble okay don't come come and argue with me saying that oh pastor that means we should not go and meet the doctor <laughs> should we not check up do our regular check up i, I don't say it's that. so i don't say that but where is your trust whom are you depending on the medicine that you are intake you you are going to take or the healer jesus christ i know holy spirit is speaking to some of you here i wish that your eyes are open today 
your prayers are answered and you see the way these people in bible they saw their prayers were answered hallelujah so let us yeah let us quickly go with that the, the ne next one i would say like see when you pray first thing is confess your sins second you have to ask leave it to the will of the lord and third you have to depend completely on our god and fourth i would say pray without ceasing oh i've been praying for years nothing happened come on i have i know um, um, a sister of mine like from one of our family members she she was very actively in the church and she was going to the church like I, we were all happy about the way she was leading her life because she accepted jesus and then uh, eventually she was uh, um, preaching to the, the her husband so that he would also accept jesus and get baptized all of a sudden she stopped going to church i was surprised i asked what happened why why she's not going the answer was more shocking she said oh i've been praying to the lord nothing happened why should i go to church why should i pray have you ever come across such people in your life yeah i tell you that's a, that's a trick of the satan trick of the satan many people are demoralized like you know discouraged oh why you are praying you are praying you are not how many years after the cancer patients were healed how many years after children people got uh, their kids uh, children doctors left they said no you cannot have but the lord gave pray without ceasing my dear brothers and sisters and lastly i would say that uh, whenever you pray make sure your prayer brings the people to the lord do not pray for the worldly blessing worldly things to go to people just i know this is little complicated let me tell you when you pray turn the people towards the lord meaning he is the author like he is the, he is the one to bless you with the anything everything so when you pray the people should turn to the lord not that uh, oh if you pray to the lord these are the things you are going to get in your life please do not pray for that make sure you turn the world to the lord by your prayer you got my point mark mark my word i tell you if you a prayers have these 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 i'm telling you the world will see the way god answers to your prayer even you you may not see you may not realize but the world will see how god has answered to your prayers hallelujah praise god amen. amen praise him can we all stand up and just close uh, close the service with a prayer come on guys father we thank you for this great time father thank you for the words that you spoke to us lord today Lord we might have prayed so far we might have thought that your our prayers were not heard but today lord i understand <coughs> excuse me i understand lord you always are there with us so you are listening to us and you would grant what is needed for us lord sometimes it may not it may not be what we want but what we need father today lord i submit these children of you lord this morning father whatever they are in need of father bless them lord oh bless them father oh holy spirit guide them walk with them lord tell them how to pray what is the will of you in their lives father i know there is a sister here once then she stepped in today this morning in our service she's going through a very bad situation in her family life a lot of questions anxiety she she is at the at the verge of giving up why i am not uh, getting the result why i am not answered i know sister i tell you god has a great and mighty plans in your life you are a chosen vessel in your family 
through you he is going to do great things in your life in your family life i'm telling you take it now it may seem it is very hard it may look like it is unbearable for you but god knows the break point he is not giving you a tough time but he is preparing you for a greater glory hallelujah who oh, tastes and see that the lord is good for oh, he tastes like honey in the rock oh taste and see the lord is sing good. it out there yes, sir for oh, he tastes like honey in the rock he is my everything he is my all is my everything both great and small he gave his life for me made everything new he is my everything how how about you yes <clears throat> can you say it just like me sweet honey in the rock for he tastes like honey in the rock oh taste and see that the lord is good he tastes like honey in the rock he is my everything he is my all come on church see it all out Lord I know Lord you are listening to me and you will grant what is needed for me You are a God who answers my prayers I believe in you I depend on you I trust in you alone master Father I submit this people father today my beloved church members Lord bless them father bless them Lord wherever they need your miracle father wherever they need your grace lord let that be witnesses coming up father raba shara ra kara bo shada riya la randa riya kara bo shidi ala randa riya kara rabo riba la shada riya kara bo o riba shaka la randa riya shada riba la ra kara bo riba la randa riya thank you father thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord bless them lord i bless them in your mighty name father I bless them in your mighty name father. Oh let your name be glorified lord. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.